you know, just stay locked in here, focus on what we need to do, run the play, execute at a high level. And uh, when we do, we always deliver. So mm-hmm. that's what happened in the month of May. Now we just got to do it again, right? What's happening? Welcome back to another episode of Talking Lots. I'm here with Brian Hess, the one and only B. Hess. What's happening, Brian? Good to be back, dude. Dude, Good to be back. It's good to be June, what day is it? It's June 4th. So typically, we record these at the end of each month, but I'm going to be real with you. May was like a blink and it was gone. And you and I have been trying to record this episode of Talking Lots for probably, I don't know, two weeks now. Yeah. The media team has been on us to record this one and we just have not i told him any time eli was slacking he he, yeah i've been you know unavailable i've been slacking no 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 this 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 month was a big one man this this month there was a lot happening in may um let's start off with the uh let's start off with the marathon so early may we ran a marathon um i know you were traveling so you weren't able to we'll get into where you were in just a minute here and, and kind of your takeaways too i'd like to hear about that but uh, we started with the marathon, and, and we were raising money for uh, Team Cystic Fibrosis, Team CF. And, uh, man, it was it was incredible. So we had, what, I think it was five or six of us finish the marathon, run and finish the marathon, um, and or the half marathon uh, for Pittsburgh. And, man, it was it was amazing. It was incredible. I, I, I did run it personally, and I was hurting by the end of that thing. I didn't see that, dude. I didn't see, you know, the people in the people in the office that ran it. They looked pretty good, you know. They didn't take the stairs after oh. after the marathon. But outside of that, everybody didn't seem to be in too bad a shape. They weren't waddling around here too bad. So, you know, we had what Mark and Paige, David, Mikey Saps, yourself, yeah. uh, Laura, Laura. Yeah, I think that's. Um, I think that's it. I think that's yeah. it. Yeah, and we, uh, yeah, we all finished it, man. It was a, it was a good time. It was a good bonding experience as always right to do hard things like that like we did the uh you know the grand canyon uh, last fall and that was just another time to like bond and and come together as a team and um you know some of us many years ago we did a 50k um, on the west coast yeah yeah yeah. so but yeah my knee my knee still hurts from that one to this day literally i I, yeah hence part of the reason you didn't run this the other the other reason you didn't run this one was you were in omaha i was in omaha yeah so tell us about that yeah, just incredible, man. My first time at the uh, Berkshire Hathaway shareholder meeting. So went out there with uh, our buddy Jay Duran and uh, met some incredible people, man. Met some folks from Australia, some business owners that, uh, you know, are part of the Berkshire family. Uh, just tons of people, man. It was it was such a great time, but uh, learned so much. You know, when you go to something like that, you know, getting to see the city of Omaha, how those guys have made an impact on it, uh, Warren and Charlie both natives of Omaha and then how that shareholder meeting just takes over that city, man. It was, it was cool to see. What was your biggest takeaway from that? Just like looking at, you know, how they've built Berkshire Hathaway and like, like looking at that, like it's an incredible. Yeah. My biggest takeaway consistently was, you know, I kept saying to Jay, like give us 60 years and see what we do. Right. Cause it, it was, uh, you know, and that's an incredible company. Like, you know, the, it's it's probably the greatest business story on the planet, arguably, right? And so, you know, take nothing away from them. But that's what, you know, my biggest takeaway was. That's what 60 years of, 60 plus years of consistent discipline, hard work, and, you know, doing the right things and, you know, making sound decisions. That's what that does. And I think that, you know, a lot of times in, today's world like you know we're we're kind of told to you know exit businesses uh you know retire by a certain age we want to be done by the age of 50 all the things that people throw around and when i walked into that room i got a completely different perspective of that i was like man the hard work that we put in um we don't have to walk away from that you know we can we can do it a different way we can you know stick around and really uh enjoy the fruits of the labor and and that's that's the biggest lesson that i walked away with is like dude we all need to look a little further down the road than what we do probably you know we're so worried about this month or this year and sometimes we don't look uh, far enough down the road to be able to actually realize like how small the problems are that we have today 
in the words of Jordan Belfort, I ain't leaving. Yeah, that's right. I ain't right. leaving. <laughs> I ain't leaving. No, that's that's incredible, dude. I, you know, I, I in talking with you, that's what you shared with me, and I, you know, I've really been thinking about that over the past. Yeah, that's yeah, gonna be a real dinger for you. You, you when I'm you're 25, dude. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll be 45 here in a couple of days, and uh, you know, when you're 25, you can't even wrap your mind around like. 80 more years of work like how the hell am i gonna pull that off right like you you just think like man how's that gonna happen but you know and i I talked to a lot of guys that were you know really successful in business and they were in their 60s and 70s and you know they talked about how the, the you know what the what were the hardest years and so you know when you when you're in the middle of building something you really feel that you know and uh for somebody your age it's gotta be like a real mind twist to like you know be able to look down the road that far you're like damn man that's a long time like how am i going to do this right and and but that's that's the whole point is like you don't have to be in such a hurry right Mm -hmm. like you know to exit or cash in or you know do whatever these guys have have, uh you know if you look at the wealth that they've accumulated over time you know most of warren's wealth was accumulated after the age of 55. 100 percent yeah, you know, pretty crazy to think about. I'm I'm excited to look back on this episode, uh, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 yeah, right? years from now and say, uh, hey, remember that podcast episode that we talked about, you know. I'm just 50, excited 60. you'll have some gray hair and wrinkles by then. Might you know? have a beard. Who knows? Might not look like a baby. Well, that's that's amazing, dude. Uh, that's incredible. And it just, you know, it shows in in how you've ran this place and how you've led this place too and, and at the Pavement Group and how you're leading One Team Media and, and top contractor school and just building everything and, and – Having it all come together, um, you know, and how we think about things and how we think about issues and working through them and servicing clients and, and working with and servicing our, our contractors and vendors as well and partners. And, you know, it all kind of goes together with that long term thought process of yep. what we're going to do. So, no doubt. That's incredible. Well, uh, I do want to say happy birthday to a couple of people on the team as well. Uh, Mark Perkins was on, the, uh, on May uh, 22nd and Miranda are on May 29th. Happy birthday to you, too. I think they both had amazing birthdays from what I could see. So happy birthday to you guys. You don't look eight a day over 21, each of you. That's true, man. That's true. And they work like it, too. You know, hustlers, man. Hustlers. No doubt. Um, to get into the uh, operations, uh, man, I just want to say, you know, all of you on, on our operations and, and PC and sales support team, man, um, you know, there, we did a lot of work in, in May. I'll tell you that. We had... Uh, 195, just shy of 200 jobs uh, scheduled in total. That's Crazy. a lot of jobs, man. I remember year one, we didn't even I don't think do that in the total year. I'm looking at your numbers there. Total jobs sourced 450. I mean, that's just crazy, you know, to think about 450 projects across the country getting, you know, connected to the right people and planned and uh, bid and processed through the system. That's just a crazy number, man. Hundred percent. So I, I do want to give uh, I do want to give Mark Perkins again, happy birthday, bro! But uh, another quick shout out. He was the top scheduler in April with sixty five of those hundred and ninety five jobs. Uh, dude, that's a lot for one person. And dude, it shows. You know, at USA success leaves clues. And I I want to say like, with Mark Perkins, like that dude is here. He is locked in uh, every single day. He stays late when he needs to. Um, he comes in early when he needs to, and you know, success leaves clues, man. Like he, there's a reason he's the top scheduler for the, for the month of, uh, for the month of May. Yeah. You don't ever see that guy doing anything but working, right? I mean, he's just dialed in. It doesn't mean he doesn't talk to people or have some fun in the process, but discipline is like that dude's middle name. You know, he just gets after it and you never see him not in focus or not happy or not, you know, taking care of stuff. So Mm -hmm. shout out to Mark. Great job, man. And then uh, uh, top sourcer, Laura, great job. 147 jobs sourced uh, in the month. That's Dude, that's a ton. I don't, know what, I don't know what that breakdown is, but, like, when you think about that from a week-to-week basis, I mean, you know, that's almost, what, 30, 37 jobs, 38 jobs uh, a week? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's crazy, dude. That's just a, a, a huge number. And so, man, it takes a lot of focus and a lot of work to be able to churn out those kinds of numbers, so. Great job, Laura. Appreciate you guys. You guys are doing incredible. Um, do you want to give Landon Ditto with with the Pave team a quick shout out? My Bro, homie. I, That's my I, homie. 
I've, I've been connected with Landon for years now. He actually just texted me like last night. Uh, we sent him a. Oh, box. he got his package. He got yeah, his package. He texted me too. And he said, "Bro, I love you guys," and, and I said, "I love you too, bro. You're great." What he, did he send me? He said, "Landon he said something about." I, I just want to. I just want to share with you what uh, what Mark Perkins did say about you. So it, it sounds like you jumped on a project for Mark really quickly. This is this is what Mark had to say about you. He said the team had an urgent, nearly impossible request of five quick serve restaurants to complete. And the PAVE team answered the call and was able to deliver in record time. Landon arranged the entire schedule and mobilized his crew on a holiday weekend to get out uh, to get the projects knocked out. Um, dude, uh, we appreciate you, man. Um, it's people like you that, um, you know, make this thing run, you know? Like, that partnership with you is... Uh, just, just so incredible, and we, I, you know, I, I don't know. I just want to say, yeah, thank it's just, you, man. it's just proof it. that people are what really, you know, drive this whole thing. And it's, you know, it's our team, but it's also the people across the country that choose to sacrifice. And, you know, sometimes that's sacrificing, you know, time away from their family or getting home, you know, late or whatever it may be. So I just want to read you guys <clears throat> a couple of messages that I've got from Landon uh, recently, and. Uh, you know, this will give you a good idea of kind of who Landon is as a, as a dude. One of my favorite guys in the in the paving industry. He said, holy crap, I'm literally daily in awe of how you guys have built the business that you have. On every imaginable level, it is a top shelf company. Know that you and your team are inspiring a new generation in a typically stale industry. Appreciate you so much. And then he sent me a picture of all the stuff in the box that was there. And he said, absolute goat energy. And anybody that knows Landon knows knows his lingo and uh appreciates his his uh, approach to life in general just uh just a great dude man and we love you know that's the greatest part of the job man the people that you get to work with and build relationships with and then supply business to their business uh and you know make that work so 100 percent so it's enjoyable landon appreciate you brother love you appreciate everything you do for us and uh you know a lot more to come there with our with our relationship um, in other news, we do have uh, a new face. We at, got a second Gonzalez at TPG. We do, we do, man. We're we're hiring all the families. Uh, welcome, Miles, man. The we, original Gonzalez, may I add? There you go. Oh yeah, Laura became OG. a Gonzalez when she <laughs> married Miles. So the original Gonzalez we got in the building now. This is true. This is true, Miles, man. It's 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 been great to uh, to work with you, brother. Uh, and uh, man, I, you know, I've had the opportunity to meet you now and, and work with you for yeah, you know the past month or three weeks or so. Um, and I have no doubt that you're going to do incredible things here. Um, you know, you've you've already come into the company and and have had uh, you know you've been just crushing it already. Uh, I, I do want to share uh, one thing with you guys that Miles said. So we always have these like you know in our in the group chat. Uh, uh, document PDF that we send out to everybody. Um, we have all these questions that that new faces, you know, new people on our team fill out. And uh, one of the questions is, "What is your favorite company value?" Well, Miles said, "Constant self improvement. Why? Life is too short to allow yourself to stay the same. There is also uh, so much out there in the world to learn and experience. To have those experiences, you need to improve yourself and gain the skills and traits necessary to get them." And that, my friend, is the type of guy, the type of person that we want on our team. So, yeah, I'm just reading like his favorite, uh, his favorite concert he's ever been to, and his favorite song, anthem of his life. It's all all interesting stuff. So, his first thought after reading, "What is the anthem of your life?" I don't even know the song. What my first thought after reading this question was, "Fancy Like" by Walker Hayes. That sounds like an interesting song, Jesse. We should. We should go research that song, figure out what the hell Walker Hayes is talking about in that, in that tune, and figure out how applicable it is to Miles. I like it. Yeah. I like <laughs> it. I think of that song. He talks about going to Applebee's. Maybe. Is like that Miles' favorite 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 restaurant? Something. Applebee's? I don't know. We gotta, we got to get him on here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We'll have him on next month next, for talking next, on. Next we'll just ask him, you know, ask him live on the yeah. show. I, I do want to make mention, too. I think Miles is now the, the tallest person on our team. Yeah, it's, it's good, awesome. man. Yeah. It's good to have tall short. people around. Yeah, I'm tired of getting all the things off the top shelf for people around here. <laughs> well, Miles, appreciate you, man. And uh, I, I can't wait to see what you know what things you have in store here at the Pavement Group. Um, we did also start off, uh, you know, we started off last month with <clears throat> Miranda and I attending the partnership summit with the Steelers. Now that was that was an incredible uh, event. We got to meet so many, you know, so many great partners of the Steelers and. Uh, at the end of the day, man, it was it was 
amazing to just listen, sit and listen to what the Steelers have in store. Um, you know, the, the chief revenue officer of the NFL was there as yep. well. She was incredible to listen to. Uh, we got to hear, you know, Omar Khan and, and coach Mike Tomlin talk about their different draft picks and, um, you know, why they chose different people. And, you know, it was, it was funny, man. O Omar Khan, uh, you could tell he's, he's been doing this for a while. A lot of his answers were very, very, uh, Oh, close to the vest. Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. sure they go through yeah. training and oh, he was, yeah. uh, you know, he was an understudy of our, our buddy, Kevin Colbert for quite a while. So, yeah. um, it's funny. I ran into Omar in the airport, uh, you know, and, uh, Omar is also a professional at like not making eye contact with people. So, so people don't get to him. Cause you know, if, if you're, if you're that guy and you start taking pictures or you start to have a conversation at Pittsburgh Na international airport, it's all over for you. You might miss your flight or not be able to make it. But it was funny. He was looking at me, and he was like, I know, uh, I think I know who this guy is, and I know who he is. And he's like kind of giving you that non, the nonverbal, like don't talk to me kind of thing, you know. So shout out to Omar, man. I, I appreciate the, uh, the uh, you know, your ability to evade people because it's, it's needed when you're, when you're anything associated to the Pittsburgh Steelers in this town when you're trying to catch a flight, so. I'll catch you soon, man. Hundred percent, man. And uh, you know, and, and maybe you can talk a little bit about the uh, Hayward uh, Hayward Cameron uh, okay, Cameron Hayward. I yeah, man. Completely <clears> fudged <throat> that one. Uh, but what we're gonna do with the Steelers this next year? Yeah. So yeah. every year, uh, you know, starting last year, so every year going forward, we will have the paving the way campaign with the Pittsburgh Steelers, and so we sponsor all the field goals and extra points. So we give five hundred dollars for every field goal and a hundred dollar for every extra point. And we donate that to a charity. So last year we had Best of the Batch. Shout out to our guy, Charlie Batch. And uh, this year we have chosen the Hayward House. And that is uh, a foundation that Cam Hayward started. Uh, Cam was uh, selected as the Walter Payton Man of the Year this year. And so we're uh, honored, grateful to be able to partner with him. I think last year we gave 20-something thousand dollars over to the Best of the Batch. And uh, so we hope that they kick even more f field goals this year so we could give even more money to Cam Hayward. So, And they, they've got a uh, celebrity softball tournament coming up here in the month of July. We'll get you some, uh, some information on that maybe in the June episode of this show. But there's a celebrity softball tournament here in uh, – or celebrity softball game here in Pittsburgh – uh, where the Washington Wild Things play, and so a lot of those guys uh, play in that, and uh, Cam Hayward uh, is part of that as well. Love it. Love it. I'm excited, man. I'm excited for the Steelers season this year. I'm excited for what we uh what We got we better seats this year, bro. Oh, we do. Yeah. You have to tell me about that I'm offline, here. bro. I'm excited. Yeah. yeah. I'm excited. Um, in uh, sales and business development, man, uh, you know, May, May was a uh, – it was a busy month. We, um, we were all over the place. We were all over the place. You know, it's uh, – it was a very busy month for for the for the pavement group team here. Um, you know, we started off uh, with the team. Um, I believe it was in May that we had him in the. Man, it feels like a blur. I think it was in May that we had him in the office. Yeah, definitely. might have been the end of April actually. But um, you know, we started off really the the start of May with having everyone in the office. So that was amazing for the you know for the meetup. Um, you know, I, I want to give a, a quick shout out to Paige Perkins. The Perks seem to be getting all the shout outs on this one. Uh, she was our, our top salesperson this month. Um, and as I said earlier, I said success leaves clues, right? And I was talking about her husband, Mark. Well, Paige, uh, she is here before probably, I know she's here before me, probably here before you. No, uh, doesn't not usually. You no, got to try harder, Paige. Got to try harder. I'm in here early, girl. You better get here Too early. Too bad. Well, she's here after you. I can guarantee you that. She stays until probably I'd say a lot of days. 6.30, 7 o'clock uh, yep. at night, um, almost every single day. And and at the end of the day, man, success does leave clues when you're when you're crushing it like that. Like she was the top salesperson by, I think, by far um, for this month too. Yeah, she's, I mean, like, she's probably working 10 or 12 hours a day just to get the most out of, you know. And, and that, listen, that's what happens, you know, with – Sales is is a business. Paige is newer to sales, and like, dude, when you get the opportunities, you got to take care of them, mm -hmm. right? And so uh, that's it's it's a great uh, success leaves clues example there of like, you know, Paige and dude, she got that work ethic from you, bro. So you should you know take some credit there. Well, I don't she, think she, she got the work ethic. She well, just she, got the, she saw the, the example that you set. That's yeah, true. and like that's you true. know, you were here late and you know did whatever it takes and 
uh, hopefully I pass some of that along to you, right? Like that, right. that's how it works. You know, you set the example and other people follow it and um, just great job to her, man. Highest dollars of bid submitted yeah. and top sales for the month. I mean, you know, cleaning up, dude. Clean it up, Paige. Appreciate you. You're crushing it. Clean, whooping up on those dudes that have a lot more experience than she does, right? I could attest to it. I see her that, here all the time. Yeah, I, I'm, the, Jesse, yeah, yeah that, all the that's, time. That's that's uh, that's that's for you, Mike Assetti and Chad Fay, and who else am I missing? That has more experience. <laughs> Mikey Saps has more experience. Yeah, than... but Mikey Saps came from roofing. We'll give him. You know, I won't rub it too bad in him. But Chad, Chad <laughs> and Assetti, man, those are those are asphalt guys getting whooped up on. I, I will say, quarter two sales leader was Chad Fay, man. Quarter two sales. That Chad's had a good year, man. And Chad, quarter's not over yet. Bro. Quarter, quarter ain't over. Quarter ain't over. I got my money. I got my money on Paige Perkins. Let's go, Chad. You better step it up, big dog. You better step it up. <laughs> no, I appreciate all you guys, man. Um, it, it's you know it was a good May, and and uh, I, I'm excited for uh, what we what we make happen here in June. Dude, it was a. Yeah. Yeah, I will say this, man. Just a shout out to the sales team, sales leadership, everybody on the team. Like massively pushed the rock up the hill the last. Two weeks, the really last week. two weeks of the month, man, we absolutely destroyed it. And, uh, you know, this this game that we play in business is about momentum. It's about mindset. And uh, they were locked in in the last two weeks, and uh, the results of that showed. And we're, we're, we're locked in for June, bro. We are locked in for June, I can tell you that. There's We got a lot of work to do, and, uh, you know, we, we don't get there by not being locked in, right? So we are absolutely locked in and ready to make it happen, ready to make it happen. Um, so with that, Brian, do you have do you have any other notes on this past month? I don't think so, man. I think uh, yeah, it was just a successful month all the way around. I love the way that we finished it. Um, you know, this is you know it's it's an election year. There's a million distractions out there, and so we try to you know just stay locked in here, focus on what we need to do, run the play, execute at a high level, and uh, when we do, we always deliver. So mm -hmm. that's what happened in the month of May. Now we just got to do it again, right? One right. month at a time, one game at a time, one rep at a time. That's how we win this battle that we got. And, um, you know, every year it's a similar battle, right? It's cliche, but game of life, game of business, it's all one in inches. That's right? it. Like, I mean, it's the truth, right? No it's doubt in, about it. Small dude. things that you do every single day, day in and day out. And, uh, you know, this year has shown me that more and more yep. often. No so, doubt. No doubt. With that, uh, guys, we appreciate you tuning in uh, to yet another episode of Talking Lots. Uh, we will see you again next month. Um, and well, this I, month, hopefully. This we'll month, do it at yeah, the we'll, end, very end of June. So we'll have two day. June episodes, one for May and one for June. There you go. Love it. Love we'll it. see you next time, guys. See you next time. Peace.